Hey guys, what's up? Okay, it's I think Natland's dragons have evolved way too much to mimic human society and that they're most likely going to be terrified of seeing a real dragon, which is why Nuvolet isn't welcome there. In Genshin, dragons are the very examples of peak elemental power, as well as being a race of elemental life forms that have lived since the beginning of time and before humanity even existed. But I've been curious as to why the dragons of Natland wouldn't want someone like Nuvolet, an ancient dragon, into their land as well as why dragons and humans coexist in Natland in the first place. I mean, as the Hydro Dragon, you would think they would welcome any semblance of their old kingdom as well as one of the rulers of the old world with open arms, right? So today we'll be discussing the reasons why dragons would even want to coexist with humans, referencing with other coexistences with other races today, Natland's current 4.5 lore, even though I think we're getting new Natland lore in 4.6, another look at the Mari Javari being a domain of dragons and the abyss, finally some theories on who or what would be able to persuade dragons into coexisting with humanity. Really, I just wanted to talk about dragons some more and questioning why such a proud race like dragons would even consider coexisting with humans is a pretty good segue. As usual, timestamps will be down below if you wish to watch a specific segment. So let's fly into this video. The land of Natlan is a region where dragons and humans have coexisted for a very long time. Based on the lore from the Talking Stick and Nuvolet, it seems that they have coexisted for more than a thousand years. Nuvolet has this to say about Natlan and its dragons. As far as I'm aware, Natlan can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlan have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Now it's worth noting that there's a difference between the modern dragons of Natlan itself and the ancient dragons like Nuvolet, as well as the Vishaps of other regions. Nuvolet, even though he is the Hydro Sovereign, which is the holder of the original Hydro Authority of the dragons, thinks that he isn't welcome there. So the changes in ideals, tradition, and culture that the quote-unquote dragons in Natlan would have changed substantially for them to either not welcome Nuvolet, let alone even be familiar with him as a fellow dragon. Other dragons or Vishap kings like Kapep or Ejdaha or even the Valin, we don't know if they would also be unwelcome or not, as well as other dragon-like creatures all over the vat. Apep was known to have lived alongside King Deshret for some time, as well as being the Dendro dragon. Whether or not it was under an agreement, like inheriting forbidden knowledge, or just a friendly coexistence is up to speculation. However, Apep still distances itself from humans and has postponed taking revenge for now. Ejdaha is a dragon born from elemental crystallization that slumbered for thousands of years and is called an elemental being by Zhongli. He could be the Geo Sovereign but he isn't exactly pure Geo like Nuvolet since he can harness other elements. But that's just my assumption. Now the Valin was born from elemental convergences of the heavens and was given the power of the animal Archon by Venti during our 1.0 Archon quest. Whether or not that is the Dragon Authority is still unclear. I'll stick with these dragons for now since they're the closest that have interacted and sort of coexisted with humans. Each of the mentioned dragons could count as ancient dragons, and all of them have relatively been distant to humans to some degree. Even though some have lived with humans, they weren't exactly coexisting compared to what I would assume as Natlan's dragons. Apep and Nuvolet count as ancient dragons, so maybe that alone means that they aren't welcome. But maybe there's a different reason apart from the generational difference between two types of dragons. Other lesser dragons like Vishaps that we currently have wouldn't be too welcome as well, but could possibly be tamed or befriended in some way since they are the modern day dragons. Or as the 4.6 special program would say, Saurians. Interestingly, Melazines are also called a new species of Vishaps by Nuvolet. But the Melazines are very fond of Nuvolet, even though they came from Elinus. Maybe this is also an example of the generational difference that modern dragons have, or maybe Fontaine's new breed of Vishaps are just different from other Vishaps of other regions. So would a level of sentience or intelligence be the reason for dragons like Nuvolet or Apep and Ejdaha and 
the Valen to be unwelcome in Tavat. Maybe a dragon of such power and presence as a full-fledged dragon would end up overturning control over the Saurian companions of Natlan. The lore from the Talking Stick mentions that humans and dragons have coexisted at least around 1,000 years ago, and that humans view dragons as their companions. At that time, Nedland had six major tribes, with five out of six chiefs, each having their own companions, all except for the lonely Tena. The names of each companion refers to what we know today as cryptids. Now, you may know some cryptids like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. Cryptids are creatures that are believed to have existed, but the presence of which they actually existed is often disputed or don't have much substantial evidence. And the companions mentioned in the talking stick speak of such cryptids in real life. But for Genshin, we don't know how or when humans and dragons have initially coexisted. 500 years after the Dragon Lords fell, a thousand years during Murata's time, or maybe after Muratans became nomads. Based on Nouvellet alone, it's possible for a Hydro Sovereign to reach human coexistence within 400 years, but that's through the guidance of Ocelor, as well as it being a mission of Nouvellet himself as a Udex. In a similar vein, the Melusine took 400 years to be fully integrated and accepted into Fontaine, and interestingly, Melusine coexistence was through Nouvellet's decree. But for the assumed to be more powerful creatures like dragons within Natlan, it may have taken longer, needed more attention to each party, as well as the dragons themselves being in a position to actually even consider what I would assume as an absurd choice. Considering dragons lost to the creator of humanity long ago, which could be alluded to the god of Natlan, Murata, or maybe even an older god similar to Fontaine's King Remus or Remoria. Interestingly, the dragon of the depths, Scylla, was also able to rally with the likely human barbarians, if only for a short period, to rebel against Remoria. And after the fall of Remoria, the Vishaps and the humans just laughed and continued on with their lives. So maybe this could be how humans and Vishaps became friends in the first place. And then maybe some exiles after Remoria's fall ended up in Natlan. Or maybe the barbarians are actually from Natlan. Who knows? So it is possible that humans and dragons can live under that consensus too. For Natlan specifically, however, it may be a different case. Both dragons and humans would need to agree to each other's terms of living. Because, well, the way dragons live are different from the way humans live. Or maybe a deal that they both couldn't refuse was given by the god of Natlan or Celestia like the prophecy in Fontaine. Another possibility is that the dragons in Natlan were mimicking the victors so much that they not only coexisted with humans but also became humans. Maybe some would evolve to be half-human, half-dragons, like the myths in Enkanomiya mentioned by Enjo. So we might see people with dragon eyes or dragon-looking designs similar to Tsumi, even though she's Orobashi's vassal. Which is where we could move on to the possible reasons for them to coexist peacefully to some degree, the likely replacement of the Pyro Sovereign. As of patch 4.5, Murata is the only known ruler of Natlan, so we can theoretically assume that it was Murata who first started coexistence between dragons and humans. Murata is the Pyro Archon and the aptly named Lady of Fire and War, so it's safe to assume that she possesses the Pyrognosis, which means that she also has the Pyro Authority. So with that power and authority, she could have proposed an alliance or sued for peace with the once Pyro Dragons of Natlan long ago. And the Pyro Dragons, which includes the Pyro Sub if they did survive, agreed to it. But because we lack information on Murata's rule of Natlan, as well as how long she ruled her region for, we don't exactly know whether or not she's ruling or is even in Natlan today. That and her children, Vanessa, as well as her fellow Muratans, are nomads with no dragon companions. In fact, they were even chased by a dragon named Ursa the Drake during Mondstadt's aristocracy, which was also around 1,000 years ago, the same time period of the Talking Sticks lore, where Natlan already had Saurian companions. This could imply that Muratans like Vanessa could not or did not have the knowledge of dragon companionship while the people of Natlan, like Tenok and the six major tribes could. All of this is implied to have happened roughly around the same millennium, which was a thousand years ago. Mondstadt's aristocracy and the talking stick, which is also when the Mari Javari was created. But we'll talk about that later. But it's possible that the Pyro Archon, Murata, isn't on the throne anymore. 
and a new Pyro Archon is seated who made peace with the dragons instead. Assuming that my timeline is accurate, Muratans and Natlans seem to be completely different people, and Natlan could have been already ruled by a different Archon around 1000 years ago. So what reason would the current Pyro Archon, regardless who it is, would have to make peace with the dragons? One possible reason I would think of is to combat the Abyss. Now I know this is an obvious and cliche reason, but within the game, dragons don't exactly like humans. Since dragons remember nearly everything from memories, they also remember when they lost and likely why humanity replaced the dragons. Which is honestly understandable. Based on lore, dragons were there first. Even though some of the dragons are still susceptible to forbidden knowledge and erosion, they still have pretty good memories and longevity as elemental beings. The idea that humans and dragons banding together to defeat the Abyss in Natlan is solely based on Nouvellet's character lore. It states that all life could possibly band together to defeat the Black Void, which means that they possibly never tried it. Ever. Whether or not he meant that the beings of both the Light and Human Realm could work together against the Void Realm, or that all life included those that also dwell in the Abyss, like Conria, or people like Skirk and the Hexen Circle. To some degree, Skirk and her master, Sertologi, could be considered a threat to Tevat since the all-devouring Narwhal was technically their doing. Nouvellet was also assuming that King Nibelong, the Dragon King, might have been wrong in possibly declining an alliance with humans. Nouvellet himself is already an example of defeating the Abyss with humanity which happened back in 4.2. And Nouvellet would also only think of even considering this option after working with humans for 500 years and after gaining his full sovereign power and memories as the Hydro Dragon. But outside of the ever-present Abyss leaking through the world, there would have to be a form of the Abyss present within Natlan that would become a big enough threat to humans and dragons. And a good place, or rather the only place I could theorize to be where the Abyss in Natlan could be is the edge of the world. The Mari Javari is said to be a land or domain found in a desert at the opposite end of the continent from Mondstadt, which is around here. It's also worth noting that there are going to be a lot of volcanoes and lava in Natlan, something that I would assume is a very fun playground for Pyro Vishaps and even for a Pyro Sovereign to control, like Nouvellet with Fontaine's Waters. So the Mari Javari could be a special domain found somewhere inside of the region or just next to or even under it that would be shown in later patches similar to the Chasm or Enkonomia. Prior to the creation of the Mari Javari, however, it was said to be a bunch of mountains of darkness that had a turbid black tide. It was also mentioned as a time of crisis, often synonymous with catastrophes or cataclysms, which means the abyss. And in such times, the hero Tenok from the Talking Sticks lore would call together the six major tribes of Natlan and fight against what we could only assume as the abyss. Today, the Mari Javari is described as a sea of ashes where there are no winds and where journeys would end, as well as a place with nothing but a sea of scorching lava and flames. Now, there are some theories that the Mari Javari changes from ashes to lava and then flames instead of being just a big pile of everything, so I might as well add that as a detail. But it's also described by Bennett as the Edge of the World in his poem during the Wind Bloom Festival event. Edge of the World could either be taken literally or figuratively, which means metaphors. The Edge of the World that leads to either the end of the world where you would fall to the abyss, or it could be an idiom for a remote place, very far from civilization and is very difficult to go to. And a place where humans can't easily go to, as well as it being a sea of flames, lava and ash could serve as the perfect domain for dragons. We can also assume that Natlan has a special location similar to the Primordial Sea or the Urmensol that carries some sort of secret or an origin of something that the Pyro Dragon guards. Like the Urmensol being the repository for all memories and the Primordial Sea being the origin of all life. The Mari Javari could be this exact place and could be holding something different like the secret to death instead as it is where all journeys end and is what war is closely associated with, but could also symbolize resurrection. Resurrection is also a big aspect of Natlan's current lore. 
both through the Travail Teasers quotes and the Agnidus Gemstone. Another reason for dragons to be there is that there is a bird of fire, or phoenix, that is said to have lived in the Mari Jafari. Again, death and resurrection. Although a phoenix and a dragon aren't the same thing, it does mean that there could be other elemental life forms there. Place where elemental life forms that are very suited pyro element, like pyro dragons and pyro slimes. And it could be where a pyro sovereign may also be found or emerge from. Interestingly, an individual named Shbalanka, who was present in Nouvellet's drip marketing, is called the one entombed with primal fire. Spolanka could also be theoretically alive, as he is the one who speaks of Nouvellet in the same way Nouvellet spoke of Nahida. Now theoretically, if dragons used to live in volcanoes and a special domain for dragons was someday overrun by a turbid black tide, for whatever reason, being driven out of it and having to resort to living with humans to some degree would be one of their choices. Initially, there would be some backlash from both sides like the Melusines did, or like the baptismal bishops in Watatsumi. But over time, both races would eventually be friendly with each other and even lead to a point where they would protect one another. Just like the Melusines and the humans, as well as the possibility of being friends with Vishaps in Watatsumi Island based on Kokomi. A sovereign dragon being present could also be a possibility as there would need to be a representative for the dragons. Unless it was the Pyro Archon who initiated coexistence with dragons in the first place. Which does make sense since she technically is the one holding the Pyro Authority. Which would then lead to 1000 years ago with Tenok and the tribe chiefs with their dragon companions going back to the Black Mountains which could be where the dragons theoretically lived and then later becoming the Mari Japari which is a place of fire, lava, and ash. Which is possible since the Archon War itself ended around 2000 years ago. Fast forward to the current day, Natlan is now a nation where humans and dragons coexist. One thing I still don't understand here is why Nouvellet or any ancient dragon wouldn't be welcome. A reason for a special domain or dragons to become infested with the Abyss is King Nibelung finding forbidden knowledge. But that would assume that King Nibelung is the Pyro Dragon, a very classic fire element cliche too. But I think it would also work for this theory. Such an event like this would be quite similar. Such an event like this is honestly quite similar to the Yaksha and the Chasm after the Archon War. But this time it's the six tribes, along with their cryptid companions, going to the mountains where a turbid tide was. You know, this video seems like it's a bit poorly timed, which is again bad timing on my part since I wasn't expecting a possible new Natlan lore drop in 4.6. But hey, at least we're finally getting a new artifact set to read some lore on. Not only that, it's also possibly from Natlan. Now, I won't be taking too much of your time here since I'm making another video already for the recent special program. So I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like, on if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!